Strength grading of structural timber isn't only about strength, but strength is the most difficult part of it. We can only measure strength destructively, so we have to use predictions and a probabilistic approach. This is done with the characteristic value, a fifth percentile. We grade in such a way that no more than 5% of the pieces have a strength lower than the strength class requirement. We just don't know which pieces they are unless we break them. With new timber, we make use of information about species and growth area, because both of those affect the link between the things that we measure in grading, the indicating properties, and the things that we are predicting, the grade determining properties. These correlations are more like associations than direct causal relationships. Knowing species and growth area is not really possible for recovered wood and is also complicated by growth conditions having changed over time, perhaps changing those correlations that we rely on. But anyway, the current grading approach is inadequate because of something else even more important than might have happened. It might be that there was some prior grading or sorting, perhaps something happened in service that changed the timber properties. If that selectively removed more of the stronger pieces, the characteristic value is reduced below what we think we have. If we know the original grade of the timber, we have some helpful information, but we cannot necessarily rely on that. And anyway, who is responsible for that declaration of performance? We better have a way to grade recovered wood so that we can confidently use it. The visual override step is like it is for new timber and serves the same purpose, but we need to include a few additional things that cover additional problematic defects that occur in recovered wood, such as drilled holes and cut notches. This builds on the sorting criteria developed in Work Package 4. After we've done this, all the timber that we send to the grading process is potentially usable. The new strength grading process can be outlined as follows. Use grading technology to assess each piece and get a probabilistic prediction of the key properties of that piece. Density and stiffness are pretty easy to do. Next, combine that probabilistic prediction over a set of pieces to get a combined probabilistic description of the set. Practically, this can be achieved by treating each actual piece as a multitude of possible pieces, representing all the potential strengths, so that we can work in a non-parametric way with numbers rather than distributions. Think of it as like seeing all the possible future timelines at once. So, for this example here, we have one piece with a certain indicating property value. That gives us an expected value for the strength, and a measure of how much it might vary from this. We can take a set of equally likely possible pieces, which covers the results we would get if we could test that piece many times, as if in slightly different parallel universes. That allows us to calculate characteristic properties of that set of pieces in the same way that we do now for new timber. We compare that to what we need for the target strength class or the application, and if necessary, we remove some of the pieces from the set to raise the characteristic values. When we remove an actual piece, we remove all the associated possible parallel universes pieces in that data set. In simple terms, comparing to how we grade new timber at the moment, we go from properties predictions made on populations of timber to making properties predictions on a piece-by-piece -piece basis. But we also go from making grading sorting decisions on individual pieces to making grading decisions based on information from sets of pieces. We still need to verify the grading, and this can be done with a combination of destructive testing a portion of the graded timber and monitoring of the grading indicating properties to look for any problematic changes in the correlations. The data from the verification can help build better predictive models, making the grading process less conservative as more timber is graded. To be able to do this, we still need to have some level of homogeneity in the timber being graded. But we don't need to be so specific about knowing species and growth area as we do when we apply the current approach used for strength grading new timber. Crucially, we can also compensate for the possible prior grading or sorting. But that's not everything that we need to consider. There are perhaps degradation processes that affect secondary properties that make it different to new timber. Tension strength and increased tendency to split, for example. 
That's something investigated in Work Package 4. And as far as the grading method goes, more research might mean that we need a different set of secondary properties equations. With wood, what sounds simple in theory isn't always simple in practice. And the only way to properly discover the complicated things is to try it for yourself. So as part of the work package, recovered spruce and oak beams were measured and tested. Results were compared to what we expect to see for new timber, but the main reason for doing this work was to uncover the practical difficulties of actually doing things. Getting the required basic information about recovered wood will require a lot of testing, although some of this can be done as part of a commercial process, a combination of grading data and production testing. Some of this approach can also be applied to timber in situ to assess properties that hopefully keep the timber in service longer through renovation and repair before reuse. In situ timber is more difficult to assess and measure, but we do have the advantage of knowing what each part is doing in the structure. In summary, strength grading as we do it now isn't going to work for recovered wood, but much of the modern technology that we have for grading can be used very effectively for a different approach to strength grading. This new approach can result in strength classes that work in the same way as the ones that we're familiar with, but those strength classes might need to have different properties profiles to take advantage of the good knowledge that we have about stiffness and density, and not be disadvantaged by the need to be a bit more conservative about strength. Since not all timber engineering design is limited by strength, this isn't necessarily a big disadvantage for using recovered wood.